Coach, if you could just give us an opening, uh, opening remark on today's win. Well, so a lot of talk lately about uh, the portal and NIL. And um, you have to acknowledge uh, the people that have done a great job of putting us in position to go out and get some really talented players. I mean, it's, it's, it's not in dispute that that's made a huge difference around here in going and getting the right types of players. But the success that the teams have and the improvement they're making is rooted in the work that they're doing, that the players are doing, that the staff's doing, that the athletic department's doing, that, that you know, everyone involved with this program is doing. So, yeah, there's a, there a just, there just too much chatter about, about that. And uh, it started, you know, not in our organization, and it pissed our players off, you know, because it's disparaging. And, uh, you know, you got to respect the work these guys do. It doesn't matter how great your players are if they aren't willing to, to be selfless, if they aren't willing to, willing to work hard, if they aren't willing to, to do the extra, you're not going to win. And so I just wanted to start off by saying that. And that is in, in no way a shot at their coach uh, because I think that he was just trying to be very complimentary. So, but that was a complete game for us, probably as complete a game as, uh, as I've you know, been a part of here. Um, just all three phases contributed. You know, we ran the ball well, we passed the ball well, we held them to three points on, on defense and 198 yards, and I thought our kicking game played really well. You know, the returns just being solid. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, Chris with the kickoffs out of the end zone are very helpful, and then when they re did return them, our guys going down there and covering, and then uh, getting TJ going in the punt, re punt return game to uh, set up some field position. We've got a lot of things we've got to work on. I'm not pleased with the second half penalties two weeks in a row that uh, I think we've, we've done some things that aren't characteristic, and uh, we have to clean that up. I still think we have some lulls in our intensity, and we seem to get frustrated at times. We have to balance that out. But um, I think it's a team that's maturing and understanding the work you have to do and the mindset you have to create to go and win a football game. And we have to recognize the fact that there is a lot of work to do and that we have not reached our potential. Maybe we have a new, a new floor, but we, we got to just keep, we gotta keep working. And I feel like that's a group of men that will do that. So that's, that's, um, that's encouraging. Nick, I don't know yet. We'll find out. I, I'll, I'll talk to Bob after this. Yeah. Question, however it's transpired, whatever the details are, to be doing what you've done the last couple of weeks and to have other coaches looking at UConn and saying, hey, that's what they're doing. You know, I'll, I'll have what they're having. You know, let's, let's, do, let's do what they're doing. That's got to make you feel pretty good that this program has reached that point in such a short time. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't feel like I don't ever want to think we've reached any point okay but I will say this it starts with the guy every left shoulder right David right because his commitment to this whole thing and all these people stand along this wall that nobody ever talks about that do the work behind the scenes and you know are people that are that are passionate about this this university and this program saying hey listen I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to you know give some of my hard-earned money to this program because I'm passionate about it and uh but I'm going to go back and say it's the work. It's the work that the players do. You just go through history, and you can see the most talented teams in the world that end up being horse crap teams because they don't work at it. They don't have the fiber that you have to have to be a good football team. Um, go look at the, the Washington Redskins or Washington Commanders now when Dion and Bruce Smith and all those guys went there, and it was supposed to be the greatest team in the history of the world, and they sucked. So, you know, it's always based in the work that you do and the people that you bring in. So. Talk about the balance again. <laughs> Wait, who asked me about balance? You did. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about you during the fourth quarter, just so you know. <laughs> the balance, so we, we ran it when we needed to run it and we threw it when we needed to throw it. The numbers now showed balance. But I also felt there was balance. You know, I felt like um, there, was a, there was a time there where they were doing a, a pretty good job against the run. And they were committing guys up into the box. And, you know, we were able to exploit that a little bit with guys like Skyler, you know, who's going to be really tough to cover one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, when you can get a team either way, you know, when you got them on the run and you got them in the pass and you're playing good defense, you know, that's, that's a good feeling. And it's a rare feeling. It doesn't happen a lot. Um, but it, it happened today because these guys have put their minds to it and they've worked at it and they, they give a dang and they're selfless and 
They want to win, and they're willing to commit to doing whatever it takes to win. What makes Skyler so effective? He just seems to, to get open. So. Oh, a lot of things. His maturity, number one. His competitiveness. Um, his work ethic. I mean, the guy is relentless in his work ethic. You know, he is so serious on the practice field. You know, every little detail matters to him. Um, he can't get enough catches. He's with the quarterbacks all the time. Um, you know, during the week, he rarely smiles. You know, he's all about business. And he comes out here, and he's all about business, and then he gets in the end zone, and he celebrates like he should. So um, he's just one of those guys that has the right mindset, and you couple that with his ability. You know, I mean, he's, he can run. He's elusive. Um, I thought on that, that double move where he scored the touchdown, you know, the guy reached out to try to grab him, and he was able to, to slip it athletically. So I think all of those things help him. But more than anything, it's just... It's his maturity and his mindset. I mean, he's a different kind of guy. Joe, he comes in, looked a little cold, as I would imagine, you know, mid game, but then he started to heat up. I guess just what did you like about the stuff in mid game? I mean, I like Joe for the same reasons every week because he's steady, you know. I mean, he works during the week. He's calm. Um, he doesn't get a ton of reps, you know, in practice, but he makes the most out of them, and he can learn without taking snaps. He understands this offense. He understands how to play in it. Um, I think probably the most important thing is that his teammates and this, this staff, we have great confidence in him. You know, like nobody, you know, sometimes when you put a backup – a backup quarterback in him gets a little tight with Joe. It's like, okay, we just keep going, you know. And uh, to me, that's just a credit to Joe and the ways he's conducted himself. He started last year as the starter. You know, he has a heart injury. Uh, we bring in a, a, a new quarterback, you know. Joe doesn't win the job. Uh, I've seen guys that would go in the tank. Joe never went in the tank. He's just steady. And he's earned the respect of, of people in this in this program because of that. And then he comes out and, and he performs. You know, he had, he was 11 for 19, 217 yards and three touchdowns. That's, that's not bad. I think most people would like that out of a quarterback that's not their starter. What was going on during the warm-ups? There's some heated exchanges going on like, well before the game and stuff. Oh, I don't know. You know. That stuff doesn't matter. All that matters is what happens during the game. Coach, going back to the running game, I mean, Cam Edwards had a really good first half, and it's largely due to his ability to um, – really hit the outside run. I mean, what is it about his game or your offense that allows him to get such separation on the outside? Well, that's our run scheme. We're an outside zone team, you know, so um, he better be able to get yards out there. We're running the wrong scheme. But, you know, he he kind of rides the wave. Like, he, he understands where the hole's going to be and, and when it's going to be there. And that's something that comes with experience playing in this scheme. You know, it's not just, like, hit it straight up in there. Like, you know, it takes some patience, and then it takes the ability to put your foot in the ground and, and get vertical. And he's just really good at that. You know, Darrell's become better at that. I think uh, Jaden, Mel Brown has become better at that. And you look at their numbers, I mean, you know, 10 carries, 10 carries, 8 carries. 98 yards, 73 yards, 54 yards. I mean, that's, you know, they're all understanding this run scheme. The defense to take it to another level today, just to looking a little bit better. You, you said, I think, after last game that you thought it was the best they played, but. It looked really good today, too. We had a good week of practice. I think that, uh, you know, this is a brand new scheme and it's an unorthodox scheme. It's not something that any of them have ever played in before except Javon Banks, who was there, you know, with, uh, with Matt Brock. So they are starting to understand the nuances of it. And um, it it's, can be complex. It looks complex to an opponent. But um, our coaches have done a really good job, I think, of teaching it. But more than anything, our players just embracing it. And when you have a little bit of success and you've got the right people um, as players on your team, they just, you know, there's a thirst to be better. And I saw that in the way they worked this week. Now, we got to reset, and it's got to start all over again for this next game. And that's just, that's just the world of, you know, comp competitive athletics. Is Freeman finally showing what he can do as a kicker? He had some challenges. Chris, yeah. yeah. Really honest. Yeah, he started out 0-2 uh, or 0-3. Was he? It was over 43. Okay, 0-3, yeah. But uh, I don't think anyone ever lost confidence in him because, number one, he's, you know, you talk about Skyler. I mean, we brought in some transfers that are really mature kids. You know, TJ, really mature. Young, they're not kids, young men. Chris, the same thing, just steady. You know, he didn't, he didn't have a hangdog look when he missed kicks. Um, he was always kicking off well. Um, he was kicking well in practice. You know, like I said a couple weeks ago, Probably didn't put him in the most ideal positions to go out and make a kick, you know?
probably should have maybe gone for it a couple times, or we could have been better on offense and got the ball down in there just to, you know, some, build some confidence. But you looked at him today, and his, all his kicks were strong, and he was following through, and he was accurate, and his kickoffs were fantastic. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what you want out of that guy. And, and nobody panicked when he missed a couple. You know, we just tried to, tried to do the right thing to get him in position to start making a few, and he did. And now he's, he's, he's rolling. Is there something to be said about playing at home? I know you said only if you win, but, I mean, that's three really good performances in a row now at home. Well, you're familiar. You're familiar with, you know, the routine. We do everything the same on Friday. You know, we don't have to get on a plane. We're not going to a... a a foreign hotel. It's places that you know we've been before. Uh, we're coming to our stadium. You know we've got our fans. You know they're cheering for us. Uh, we we you know we we came down here and practiced three times during our preseason camp. You know knowing that we were going to have this home stand. And uh, uh, I mean it, it's we've just got a you know we've got this rare schedule. This rare schedule. And so we can't assume that just because we're playing at home, we're going to go out and play well and win. We have to make sure that we do all the work that we can do to make sure we go out and play well and win at home. But you gotta, you've got you to gotta win at home. That's got to be mandatory. That's non-negotiable, you know? So, and, you know, I mean, shoot, you, you love the, I don't know how many people there, I don't care. I just know that the people there, you love that they're there and they're loud and they're, you know, they get behind you. And I think if we can win at home, I think more people will start coming to games. You know, we have to we have to earn that. I've, I've been saying that for you know several months, and I think that you're earning it. And people want to see points, right? And people want to see they want to see points on the board, right? So we went 48 last week and 47 today, and 63 at Merrimack. So I think if you want to come out and see some exciting football, you know, and I know it's you know there's there's trust issues. We got to earn it, but you know, give us just give us a, just give us a chance, man, because we appreciate them. Yeah, I gotta, we got to be careful. Yeah, we do. We have to be careful. Um, I thought he was okay. You know, I don't think he was seeing it as well as he has in the past. Um, I felt like our protection was okay, but when there was breakdowns, I thought he had a chance to step up and he tried to get out. I think sometimes a quarterback like that that has some speed, they rely on their speed too much and they try to escape the pocket, you know, out and around rather than up and out. And I'd like to, you know, we'll work on that. And uh, you know, get him more comfortable, more confident. Once again, he's he hasn't played a lot of football. Every week is an opportunity for him to learn. He's going to learn a lot off of that that first half, or you know, however long he played. Um, the one thing that you appreciate about appreciate about Nick is that he he sees the field well, he sees the game well, he understands it. He's very coachable. Um, he wants to be a great player, and uh, and he will learn from you know any of the mistakes that that we see on film. Great. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you.